Congressman, question. How are you? Did you really vote to increase the debt ceiling? Hey. For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. We're at Bedford High School. Uh, someone just asked me where they could park. I said, well, I don't know what the rules are here, but I bet there are a lot of them. I call it Bedford's boondoggle. It's a relatively recently built school. And then there was another incident, I guess it was in 2014, where they, uh, they issued this extremely, uh, not the folks I was filming, but so somebody you know, with the school issued this extremely intrusive personal questionnaire to all the students, try to get them to answer all these extremely private questions. Uh, that's one of those things where I didn't have to lift a finger. Uh, the people of New Hampshire rose up on that issue. Howdy. I know, congratulations. I uh, um, it was only within the last month, right? Oh my gosh. How big? All right. Good to see you. Congressman, question. How are you? Did you really vote to increase the debt ceiling? Hey. How are you? Good to see you. See you. Uh, what I was hoping to achieve was getting um, cut cap and balance which is the uh, legislation that uh, I worked on with House members and senators that did, which was cutting spending, capping uh, spending over 10 years and requiring a balanced budget amendment, which I think is the most important thing uh, to have in order to reduce spending uh, at the federal level. That did pass the House. The Senate rejected it. So uh, we ended up coming up with the Budget Control Act, which did have the cuts and the caps. We actually were able to cut spending for the first time in 50 years, not nearly as much as I think was necessary. Uh, but my focus is going to be on trying to eliminate that short-term debt, have a pro-growth economy so we can then have a reduction in the long-term debt, which continues to spiral out of control under this president and under Harry Reid as the senator, uh, the Senate leader, and under Cal Shea Porter who's serving our state right now. So there's certainly clear differences. There are um, absolute necessities in trying to reform the size and scope and shape of the federal government. Uh, but we've got to get serious as a nation to try to address those issues and um, because future generations are, are at risk. I appreciate so, the answer. Thank you. Yeah, but thank did you, you very read much. the whole did you read the whole bill I've before you? I've got to get in. I've got to get in because I want to say hi. Okay, take care. Admit, I saw this uh, graph the other day that shows uh, Obama's spending levels. And although I'm not sure I trust this graph completely, it indicated it seemed to indicate that spending has actually been flat since uh, roughly 2008. So uh, if that is in fact the case, and that maybe that you know as long as that graph includes the you know stimulus and so forth, uh, that would be an indicator that something has been kind of going right for the last few years. Uh, if government doesn't grow, then uh, that's very unusual. That's about as good as it gets to have a flat government. But again, I'm not sure that graph is accurate. We definitely do have some gridlock in Congress, and that's good. Yeah. Nope, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM, Feds don't want you to hear them.